electricity comes from Chuka to Simtoka, a distance of 54 kilometers. When it comes from Chuka to Simtoka, the voltage in the cables bringing it, these great big cables on these tall transmission towers we see all over, it's at a very high voltage of 220,000 volts. Now just think about that. In a torch battery, your battery is around about one and a half volts. The electricity that powers your rice cooker or your electric fire or your light bulb, that's at about 220 volts. So you imagine what 220,000 volts is like. And if we were to feed 220,000 volts into your house, you'd all be dead because you'd all be electrocuted. So the voltage has to be lowered before we can feed it down to your house in Timpu. And as you'll hear in a moment, when I say the voltage has to be lowered, what I mean is the energy carried on each coulomb of charge has to be reduced. Now, this is the job of the Simtoka power distribution point. The electricity comes in from Chuka along these wires here, and the voltage up there is 220,000 volts. And then it comes down into this brown thing and into things called transformers. Now these are very big transformers and the voltage is reduced by the transformer down from 220,000 volts to 11,000 volts. Now, in terms of what volts really means, I'm going to say that in a different way. When the electricity comes from Chuka, there are 220,000 joules of energy being carried by each coulomb of charge. It comes in here, 220,000 coulombs of energy on each coulomb of charge into the transformer, and it comes out with just 11,000 joules of energy on each coulomb of charge. Because you will remember, volts means energy on a coulomb. Volts means the number of joules of energy that are carried on one coulomb of charge. So, 220,000 volts into this big device and going out at 11,000 volts. And there's a massive current of, would it be about 300 amps, going through all the wires inside here. Well, you know, if you pass electricity through the wire of an electric fire, the, it glows red hot. So as the current goes through here, a lot of heat is generated. And most of what you can see outside here is all to do with a cooling system a cooling system to keep the wires inside from getting red hot and burning out. And instead of using water as a coolant, because you know water with electricity is dangerous, these use oil as a coolant. So just like in the cooling system in a motor car, here you have oil being circulated to take away the heat generated as the electricity comes through the coils. Now, the other thing you notice on these things are great big brown things, a bit like large brown caterpillars. Well, if we've got voltage coming in here at 220 volts, it needs a lot of insulation. And these brown things are insulation to hold up the wire. If they were made of metal, then the whole of this device down here would be at 220 volts, and me and the cameraman and manager here, we'd all be dead with an electric spark. So the purpose of 
these brown things which are made of pottery. They're made of clay. The purpose of them is to insulate the wire from the outside metal of this transformer. So these are great big brown insulators. Again. So just to summarize what we've got here, we've got the voltage, the electricity coming from Chuka at a voltage of 220,000 volts, and it comes down into this transformer where it's lowered to 66,000 volts. And we'll go round behind here and see where the 66,000 volts comes out. A great deal of cooling is required, and it's cooled by flowing oil. And we have to insulate the 220,000 volts from this metal using these brown pottery insulators. Let's go behind. Can we go and see where 11,000 volts comes out? So, Sonam, yeah. here we've got the uh, behind the transformer we just saw, and we can see here the wires, thick wires, bringing the electricity at 66,000 volts. And if you notice, the metal tower there holding it up has another insulator on top of it, but because this is only 66,000 volts, that pottery insulator does not have to be so long because the voltage is not as great. So 66,000 volts, that's to say 66,000 joules of energy on every coulomb of charge that flows along that wire. And then it goes over there. What happens to it over there? Uh, uh, after converting 66 from a transformer, and it directly enters the 66 kV bus. Right. The 66 kV bus. From the bus, again, it is uh, fit back to another transformer, which is uh, 66 by 11 kV. Right. So here we are at 66. It goes along those three wires that you can see behind the grid here. And it goes to another transformer where it is turned from 66 thousand volts down to 11,000 volts. Coming from Chuka here, 220,000 volts into this first transformer which brings it down to 66,000 volts. Out here at 66,000 volts, along there, along those three wires to another transformer which brings it down to 11,000 volts and then out on the line. Now we've got 66,000 volts going in to that gray box, and it changes it into only 11,000 volts. And 11,000 volts comes out of there, down through the tunnel here, and then it goes inside the building into a control room. And from the control room, it comes out, and then at 11,000 volts, it's sent down the wires into Timpu. Well, now, if we were to feed 11,000 volts into your house, your rice cooker would blow up, and you'd all die because you'd all be electrocuted. So once the 11,000 volt gets into Timpu, the voltage has to be brought down again. And there, there is a smaller station where the voltage is reduced from 11,000 volts to 440 volts. And then, when it gets into your house, it comes in at just 220 volts. Now, we've talked about volts all the time. 66,000, 11,000, 440 volts. What does this word volt mean? And we'll go into that in a moment. But let's just go and see where our electricity goes from here down into Timpu. So, Sonem, yeah. this is where the 11,000 volts is fed down by these wires down into Timpu. Yeah, yes. This is the 11 kV feeders 
going towards Thimpu. From <coughs> uh, this feeder, we directly send it to the customer service at Thimpu, where right. they have a uh, separate uh, transformer, which transform into 11 kV to 440. From right. 440, they distribute to the right. residential, residential right. area. Right. Right, so 11,000 volts going down these wires into Timpu near your house, where you may see some small transformers like this, which produce 440 volts, and then that's split up to give 220 volts in your house. You may ask, why do we send it from Chuka to here at such a very, very high voltage, which would fry us all if we were to get anywhere near it. Why don't we just transmit from Chuka at 220 volts and then feed it straight into Timpu and we wouldn't need the whole of this place here? Well, there's a very, very good reason why it's transmitted 53 kilometers from Chuka at that very, very high voltage. And later on, we'll just mention why that's the case. So, Thank you very much for showing us inside here, but you're controlling all the electricity that's going down into Timpu. Yeah. So somewhere you must have a control room yeah, to be able to switch it on and off. Yes, yes we have just uh, nearby. I, right, I can, can we go and yes. look at your control room? Uh, most welcome. That would be fine, let's go and look at that. So we've got here switches and meters. Can we go and look at the... So this controls what's being sent down into Timpu. Look at the voltmeter. Thousands of volts. 11, 11,000 volts. The current, much higher current, round about, is that 300 amps? Yeah. Approximately 300 amps. A very high current going down into Timpu. And volts multiplied by amps gives us watts, the power. So we've got here about, what's that, is that? About 2.8 million watts. Volts multiplied by amps gives watts. And uh, so this monitors all the power, and the voltage and the current that's going down into Timpu. And if there were a sudden short circuit, we'd suddenly see the Daga whoosh like that, and then all these relays would trip out. Uh, and of course, standing just here, Sonam, yeah. I've got a lot of power now, haven't I? Because if I were to turn that handle, whoops, like that, it would cut off all your electricity in Timpu. Shall I do it? <laughs> Perhaps I'd better not. But there are relays here which will do it automatically if there is a problem in the line. Thank you. So this is the control room. And we've talked all the time about volts, about amps, and about watts. And you will have learned in your physics lessons that volts multiplied by amps gives us watts. But what actually is volts? What does it mean? And what actually is amps? And what does it mean? I mentioned charge, quantity of charge, those little boxes of electrons, which we'll call coulombs. Remember, a coulomb of charge is just like a dozen eggs. 12 eggs make a dozen. 6.2 times 10 to the 18 electrons make a coulomb of charge. Now, I don't know if you ever noticed, sometimes on a very dry day, especially in winter time, if you get out of a car or a taxi and you slide off the seat and then you are going to close the door and you touch the door and you, whoops, you get a little electric shock static electricity. Well, that's because a little bit of electric charge passed through you. Some electrons passed from the car door to your body, and you felt them. 
And the sort of number of coulombs that passes through your body when you get a bit of an electric shock in the car, or when you get out of the car, that's probably just a few millionths of a coulomb of charge. So 6.2 times 10 to the 18 over a million of a coulomb of charge. Very small coulomb of charge. It's not going to hurt you. Lightning, a bolt of lightning that comes down, if it hits you, that can push 200 through you. 200, instead of a few millions, 200 coulombs. And if each coulomb is carrying a lot of energy on it, that's you vaporized and gone. So lightning, when a bolt of lightning strikes you or the Earth, a few hundred coulombs of charge pass. That's a large amount of electric charge. Our nerves, which control all our muscles and our thoughts in our brain, they all work with electricity. We're actually a great mass of electrical connections. And when something happens, when I say to my finger, that way, then electrical signals go down through my nerves to control my muscles. And when an electrical signal goes through my nerves, it operates at about 75 thousandths of a volt, 75 millivolts, which is a very, very low voltage. On the other hand, if I look at a typical battery which powers a torch, then that's about 1.2 volts. In other words, for each coulomb of charge that flows, I get 1.2 joules of energy. What about things like computers, transistors, USB drives? They usually operate on a voltage of about 5 volts, 5 joules of energy for every coulomb that flows through. In a car, of course, the average car has an electrical system which operates at 12 volts, 12 joules of energy for every coulomb of charge that flows out of the battery. But if we look at lightning, Not only does that send down a large quantity of charge, several hundred coulombs, but each coulomb has got a lot of energy on it. Typically, the voltage of a lightning strike is about a hundred million volts. That's to say each coulomb of electrical charge that comes down in the lightning has got about a hundred million joules of energy on it. And when it hits you or the Earth, you will have several hundred coulombs. Several hundred coulombs, each one carrying a hundred million joules of energy. That means there's a great deal of energy there, which is why a lightning strike can do so much damage. Not only kill you, it can destroy a building, it can set fire to a building, it can set fire to a tree. A lightning strike contains a lot of energy. High current, a large quantity of charge, and a very large quantity of energy on each coulomb of charge. So we should always be careful with lightning. But you know, when you get out of your car and you get a little bit of an electric shock, you've got static electricity, that's probably nearly a million volts, a million joules of energy on each coulomb. But the thing is, a million joules of energy on each coulomb, but we only get a tiny part of a coulomb, a few millionths of a coulomb. So even though there's a million joules on one coulomb, if you only have a millionth of a coulomb, it means you've only got one joule, and one joule doesn't do you any harm. So don't worry about dying from the little electric shock when you slide out of your car and touch the metal of the door. Electricity can be very, very dangerous. Electricity is a very powerful thing.
You have to be careful with electricity. You have to understand about current so that you know what current your electrical cooker is taking, you know what current your electric heater is taking. You have to make sure the wires that you use to connect are big enough for the amount of current. You have to have fuses. And as I said earlier, so many electrical fires in Bhutan are caused because people don't understand about current and voltage and the need to have wires thick enough to carry all those cool ohms a second that are rushing down the wire. So take care with electricity. Electricity isn't a toy. Electricity can help, but it can also kill. Electricity and water do not mix. If they do mix, they can be lethal. Earlier in this program, we were up there with all these high voltages and these transformers and these overhead power cables. Today is a very, very, very dry day. If today it was pouring with rain, I would have to be much more careful walking around up there in the distribution station. Water conducts electricity. This means if you are wet and you touch an electric cable, a much bigger current is going to go through you. More coulombs a second carrying 220 joules on each coulomb. Enough energy to kill you. When you're dry, less current flows. Wherever you get water and electricity, you have to take very great care. And one situation where you need specially to be careful is if you use one of those electric water heaters, which is an element of an electric fire wound round a wooden board, and you just plunk the whole thing into water. That is very, very dangerous. And really, you shouldn't use that sort of water heater. Electricity and water don't mix.